Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just a bitchy. A bitchy, yes. Who carries on school holidays? Yeah, good, good. School holidays. I don't even go to school anymore. Like, I've, I've graduated, but I'm still stoked. School holidays. It is awesome. So good. I get to feed crocodiles. It's the best. The day is sunnier. Yes. Your heart is lighter. The world is wonderful. Definitely. It's awesome. No one's got COVID. It's great. So far. Yeah. <laughs> and guess what? Chandler's here. Good segue. Thank you. Yeah, good segue. Yeah. Well, Chandler, I have got a question for you. Yes. Now, uh, there may be a certain person that's not here, but it is for a very good reason. It's for a good Why reason. Why is that? Why is Bindi not here on Yes, staff? so Bindi might be a little busy because she is with our little girl Grace, who is about to turn six months old. What? In just a few days, oh, yeah. That's awesome. Very cool. I, personally, I, I asked Bindi, I said I could be a really idea to maybe get Grace in here and recreate yeah. that iconic photo yeah, you know, when that Dad one. was feeding the prop and yeah. 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 you could follow that early uh, tradition that that was yeah. um, quickly yeah. shot. Yeah, that didn't go on. Yeah, I know it attracted a lot of attention. Well, I mean, it wasn't controversial at all. No, but uh, yeah. okay. look at you now. All Turn grown up. Right. Yeah, you know, I love that Grace fell asleep during Croc Show, because Robert used to take a nap during Croc Show. Yes. And he wasn't quite two years old when he went, wait a minute, that's Croc Show. Yes. So he stopped napping and started watching the Croc Show. Definitely. It's still a favorite part of that. It is. Awesome. It is. So we are here to feed a crocodile. Yes, we are. But we also do crocodile research. And I want to let you know a couple of interesting things. First of all, we just got back from our annual crocodile research trip where we tagged 10 new crocodiles for science. So we're tracking them in the Wenlock River at the Steve Irwin Wildlife Reserve. And we now have 223 crocodiles that we're tracking up there, which is pretty special. But we did have something very upsetting happen while we were there. We did, yeah. Unfortunately, uh, we found a dead crocodile in the river. And this was really sad for us. I mean, we're here for crocodile conservation and we found this croc floating. It was really suspicious. So we actually pulled him gently out of the water, had a look, and realised that there was a gunshot straight through his head. It was absolutely devastating for us. So, that instigated a really exciting program to hopefully crack down on wildlife crime. That's right, so we've joined Team Up with Crime Stoppers. We have. So that you guys here, if you see any crime against wildlife, you can call Crime Stoppers anonymously. It's a really cool system. The bad guys get caught, if anyone's prosecuted, it's a $1,000 reward. But, yes. but, there's something different about this person in the vicinity of Weba who committed this particular crime. Yes. Whoever did shoot this crocodile that we found, we're going to give whoever can bust him ten grand. Ten thousand dollars. Oh, yes. We're going to get that. I think that for all of us, it was something that felt like the right thing to do. I think, especially out of respect to Dad's mission and his legacy, his favourite animal, he dedicated his life to it, and so it only feels right that whoever committed this horrible crime, we get to the bottom of it and make sure they are beautiful Australian icons. Are taken care of. Yeah, so we're all going to support the great work that Queensland at least does every day, and I'm getting into your piggy bank first. Okay. <laughs> uh, thank you. Who are we feeding? $10,000 is a lot. Yeah. Okay. It is. <laughs> Who are we feeding then? Well, today we have got an absolute legend of a crocodile. We've got Big Black, Big Bad Bluey. Bluey? Big Bad Bluey. Bluey? Say that three times. Not one of the Sassons brothers. Yes. That's a good one, huh? Bluey. Bluey. What you do you gotta be at least my age to know that joke. <laughs> so, Bluey hits like a ton of bricks. Mate, he hits so hard. And I mean so hard. He, when he comes out, he has the intent to watch it. Okay, well then he's all yours. All right. Enjoy that. Now, what we're going to do oh, here... Need some food first. No worries, thanks, mate. Chandler's going to go get me some food. We're going to start to direct our attention down here to the mouth of the canal, and we're going to watch this big crocodile start to make his way out. 
Alright, now, what I want you all to do is look very carefully. Crocodiles are prehistoric creatures. They have the ability to remain completely... Oh, here goes, come here, quick. To remain completely hidden until the last second. Now, focus your attention here. Here he comes. See that dark shape starting to emerge. Have a look at the size of this animal. Now, what he's doing here, he's playing the game. He's trying to... He wants me to get closer, but no way. Come on, mate. Come on, big boy. Now, once he sees this bucket here, he knows that means food. He knows I'm in his territory, and he's going to put on a strike. So, bear with me. Look at that. <laughs> here we go. He's thinking about it. Mate, you're not over here. All right, now, now, don't be fooled. It might look small from where you're sitting, but believe you me, from down here, it is a very different story. Now he's using the camouflage there from the shadows and he's going to start to score. You can see he's got all four feet planted and he's ready to go. And that tail is where he gets all of his power from. And at any minute he will explode out of the water with a level of ferocity unlike anything you've ever seen. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> this, uh, you didn't read the script mate. <laughs> yeah, mate, what do you reckon? You know what? It's almost got to the point where I might have to do the unthinkable and get in water with him. He is playing the game. You can see when he pops up, he's got his eyes, his ears, and his nose all above the surface of the water. That's the wrong way, mate. <laughs> I'm this is going great, isn't it? I'm going in. Yeah. Right, I'm going to hand you over to the chandler. Whatever you do, never enter the water with crocodiles. Keep it up. Yep, you never want to do what Robert is doing here. I'd like you guys to appreciate how Robert is risking life and limb here to show you guys how incredible Bluey the Apex Predator is. So, Bluey has Robert right where he wants him. He's getting Robert to come closer. He's luring him into that false sense of security. Look out, Robert. Oh, he's on the run. He still has Robert going after him. I really don't think Bluey read the script today. Um, so this is a bit awkward. <laughs> there you go, Robert. Well, I guess Louie is still trying to get Robert to come closer. You'll see, keep your eyes peeled into this canal system, and you'll see the apex predator in all of his glory making his way out into the crocodile. Have a go at that. All right, you can see he's coming over. He gets all that power from his tail and Robert. Making his way over. Now, careful. Don't blink. You might miss the strike. Come on, buddy. Come on. There you go. What are you doing? We literally swam you out here. Louie. I think he's good. I think he just wanted to come out and swim around for you guys. So <laughs> give a big hand to Robert and Louie, everyone. That's awesome. Yeah. That is, that's fantastic. Um, just to, just to assure you, that's, uh, that's not actually blue. Yeah, I got that feeling too. Yeah, that's, that's not even a crocodile. No. That, that's an American alligator. That's right. Now, I know you know how to tell the difference because you're from Florida. But for those of you here, there's an easy way to tell the difference between an alligator and a saltwater crocodile. When they leave like that, one you see later, and one you see in a while. <laughs> Got that? Yeah, that's the easiest way to tell the difference. Excellent. Yep. So, Robert, that was that was fantastic. It was terrifying. It was awe-inspiring. That was worth the 59 wasn't it? Yeah, definitely. Just that. <laughs> Just that. Yeah, that was not Louie. Surprisingly, no. that was not... Big bad bluey, but yeah. uh, but you are going to get to see bluey. Yes. Can yes. you do me one favor? Sure. What's that? Don't pick him up. Don't. Okay. <laughs> I'll try to. Okay. Thank you. We're going to go to the big screen to watch bluey coming out. Yes, the most well-known of the Zazzles, right? Bluey is pretty cool because he is not quite big enough to be real slow on land, 
So he's still a little bit, shall we say, I don't know, terrifying? Yeah, that would be the word. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that you stay safe with crocodiles because we just came back from the Cape and we watched people every single day sharing water where our great big study crocodiles are living. So it's astonishing to see, but what I want to do is make sure you guys are all safe. So if you go up north, whether you're in Queensland, the Northern Territory, or you want to go through quarantine and go to Western Australia, good on you. You just got to not do what Robert's doing. Don't stand too close to the water's edge. And you know, when your dad and I used to do this show together, Robert, this is when he'd be like, oh, I'm going to get in the water with the crocodiles. So he didn't say it like that. He gave me more Yeah, I, I, I. Like, like with, with the little guy. Yeah. He just jumped in with the crop. That's crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. Yeah. Can, can I do it? Can I give it a go? No, Robert. Come on. Please. Please. Water. Please. No. Oh, look how well it went with the other guy. It was no. perfect. No. Please. What do you reckon, guys? Come on. Jump in water with him, mate. Eh? What do you think? Yeah. Let's do it. What could possibly go wrong? Yeah. We'll be right. All right. So, being in the water with a saltwater crocodile is first of all a very different story from being in the water with an alligator, but there's a few simple things that you really need to pay attention to. Now, first of all, you should never end up in this situation. Never, ever go in the water with a croc. They've been hunting next to the water's edge and in the water for 200 million years, so there's no way you'll ever outsmart it or outswim it. But what I want to show you guys today is that natural behaviour that Bluey has. He's not just blitzing out here 100 mile an hour. No, he'll wait for later before he does that. He's stalking. He's not making a single ripple on the surface. And as I step around and carry on, he can pick up on that. He pinpoints the vibrations that I send out here. And that gets him a little bit grumpy. Not only a food response, but also the territory. He wants me out. And now that Bluey is super grumpy, I reckon it's over you. Oh. <laughs> Come on, Bluey. Come on, Bluey. working me much more than I'm working him. 
down to the other thing. You know how you do it. He's a tiny, tiny animal. Now, what I want him to do is actually get under the surface of the water. If he pops under, that'll really show you exactly how a wild crocodile would operate out in the wild. But, my simple Bluey, he's going to do whatever he wants to do. And to be honest, that's totally fine. You're much bigger than I am, Bluey. You do you, mate. Now, see, let's give him one go here, mate. Come, Bluey. See that acceleration with his tail. He comes out of the water incredibly quickly. But once he is out on land, he loses that element of surprise. Right now, Louie knows the jig's up. He knows that I can see him. So he wants me to get just that little bit closer, which would be a great show for you guys, but not for me. <laughs> so, what do you reckon, big boy? Hey, are you on board, mate? Are you on board, mate, big boy? Are you reckon, Louie? Oh, stop looking at my head, Louie. And in the water, that's two different things. You know, you see a crocodile in the water, and that's where it's poetry in motion. But he's got another great tactic up his sleeve to grab his food. Bluey. Come, crocodiles can, that one. Crocs can tail walk, so they can come vertically out of, their out of the water nearly their whole body length. Come on, Bluey. Show them how good you are at catching stuff flying. Pretend this is a flying fish. Come on over here. Right, it's to your right, starboard. Hard to slow, let's get his favorite. He did such a good job. Let's get him a nice young crab. Hey. Crab doggies, they're fresh from the Viking Cafe as well. Yeah, thanks, Robert. That's comforting. So, that so what I'm going to do is give Louie out on land one last time. Come one here. more try. So you can see, you see the top speed of the crocodile once they're out of the water, which isn't, in fact, very fast. So you see he's going to line up that strike. Come on, Louie. Come on, Come on, Louie. Just get closer, Chandler. Yeah, thanks, Robert. <laughs> Not get closer. Our cocks like quiz game called Come Closer. It's a really sweet game. Oh, what's gonna happen? Why did you get Chandler the smallest food item in the world? That's a setup. Come on, Louie. Now remember, Chandler is the smallest food item in the world. Now remember, Chandler, if you want, we got a nice big piece of food for you. Yeah, we do. I'll see if you want to know for this, and if not, we'll get an even bigger piece of food. Come on, Louie. Come on, Louie. Here we go. No, you want the big piece of food, don't you? Hey Chandler, what do you reckon? Oh, I don't like this, there you go. Right here, Blue. This will get you excited. It's a nice, delicious chicken. There you go, that's better. Yeah, that got me. Whatsoever when he's exposed out of the water. I could, I could even lay down right in front of him. 
Yeah, no, it's not for long. But I see uh, he could care less. He just wants to head straight back into the water. And that's because this is where crocodiles hunt. This is where they're dangerous. In the water and right here at the water's edge. But basically, all you got to do is just don't do what you've seen us do here today. You'll never ever have a problem with it. Even for a young, thick, quick crocodile like Bluey, we can easily stay out of his way. And it is really important that we try to minimise human crocodile conflict because unfortunately, when an attack happens, of course, it's devastating for human life involved, but also for the crocs. They're hunted, they're culled, they're killed, and it's so sad to see. These guys are top of the food chain. They are the apex predator. Out the wild, an animal like Louie takes care of everything else underneath him. Fish, crustaceans, and if we lose crops, our whole ecosystem will be under a lot of threat. So let's work together to stay safe around crops and work to protect them. But Bluey's done well. He's had a couple of good strikes, but I reckon it's time to get him properly fired up. I know he's got it in him. And Chandler? Yeah, I reckon that's over you. All right, you can dig it, mate. All right, let's see if we can get Bluey interested in a nice big food item. Oh, what Chandler's going to do is he's going to simulate a feral pig. So when Bluey comes out and grabs that piece of food, Chandler's going to pull on the rope and simulate a struggling animal. So let's see what Bluey does when he thinks he has something that's fighting back. Death roll! You little ripper! Crocodiles will death roll! Woo! Two death rolls. What's he going to do? Six death rolls? Maybe. Maybe not. Oh, number one. Of course, I inhaled a bug, so I'm feeling good. What's he gonna do now? Don't you love watching the crocodile roll? You never get to see their cute little tummy. It's all white and soft and chubby. Look, he's just not gonna stop. He's just gonna keep rolling. Oh, that was Trying to spin that animal off its feet. And he gets his lunch. Way to go, Chandler! So, <laughs> woo! Bluey! They see you rolling, buddy. Yeah, they do. Look at you. Ooh, that's bone crunchy. You've got some good jaws. A few little burps there. Oh, Bluey, you're so beautiful. We love you. It is interesting that I can sit this close to Bluey because, see, he's listening to my voice, and not many people know this fact, but because he's a male, he can only do one thing at a time. So if I keep talking, I'm relatively sane, but I'll be quiet so you can think. He <laughs> didn't like that one. <laughs> That's a really, really funny joke. Yeah, it's really good. It's surprisingly scientific. Oh, is it really? Yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm thinking right. about doing a paper on that one. <laughs> that sounds good. How I can't eat pizza and answer the phone. Mm. Yeah. It's quite a quandary. But actually now we've gotta we've gotta get him all the way home. We do. And we he's do. had is that a big feed? He's not really hunting food anymore. I'm not sure how we're going to lure him all the way home. Do you yeah, know? I, don't know. I, I feel like at this point, there's really only one thing left to do, and that's going to be to actually infringe on Bluey's territory. What do you reckon? How, how are we going to infringe on Bluey's territory? What if I jump in and swim him all the way home? What do you reckon? Sound good? Maybe we can just get the ibis closer to the water. Why does it have to be you? I reckon it'll be fine. We'll be right at it. Let's do it. Yeah, we'll jump in with him. Swing him home. Oh my word. Alright, let's see if Robert can successfully... Please don't panic. Do not worry about what Robert. The water is heated. <laughs> That's right. It is 30 degrees Celsius. It's quite pleasant. Bluey, of course, is on the surface, as Robert mentioned earlier. Not really dangerous. He knows Robert can see him. 
He's just kind of like a big, sharp pool toy. It's only when they submerge that they're truly hunting their prey and actually dangerous. So really, this is a relatively mild risk. As long as Robert doesn't hit his head on the gate, I think he'll be pretty good. Louis is motivated. Louis is moving. Okay, now he's submerging. You might want to actually swim, Robert. Actually, like, quickly, think Ian Thorpe. There you go. Okay, as Bluey heads under that first gate, I'd like you to appreciate you have just experienced what you can see nowhere else on planet Earth. Thank you. to make that you just simply don't want to share water with a crocodile and you'll never have a problem with one. Where I'm from in Oregon, we have bears. Bears can run faster than people, they can climb trees, they can push trees over, they can swim. Bears are something we all learn to live with camping in Oregon. These are way easier because there are aquatic predators. My you need to go into the water and you're in a big boat. A good dinghy, you'll never have a problem with the crocs. Stay well back from the water's edge, don't camp near the river, and you'll never have a problem. Crocodiles are beautiful apex animals, and that top of the food chain means like they're, they're kind of like the roof on your house. If you took the roof off your house, everything underneath it would be destroyed. And it's the same with crocodiles. We just love crocs. We've been working with crocodiles for 29 years now, trying to study and protect them. And it's so important to have them in the wild. Crocodiles are classed as vulnerable, the same as koalas, and they're very, very special. You stop and think, when a crocodile hatches out, he's about, in the old term, seven inches long, and at that size, everything tries to eat a young crocodile. Fish, birds of prey, everything has a go at a so for a crocodile to grow up like bluey size is truly impressive. Only about one in a thousand crocodiles manage this. And that's why we need to look after them. Because when we lose them, it would be like losing bears or wolves, lions or tigers. The entire ecosystem would definitely suffer. So Louie has gotten to the point where he needs to go into his area. And his habitat has like a little land bridge to it. So Robert's trying to encourage him in, but Louie knows he's got to come out one last time to get into his enclosure. And it causes him to have to expend a lot of energy to get over land. His tail will enable him to swim nearly as fast as a dolphin. But once he's out on land, it's like a big handbrake and really slows him down. So he knows it's going to take some energy to get up and over that little land bridge and back into his habitat. So he's sizing it up, he's getting ready, over he goes, and once he's back into the water, he's like poetry in motion. Robert's going to go ahead and give him one last feed because he did such a fantastic job. Oh, sorry. He's in there with this beautiful girl, Bowen. And I just really want to thank you for coming to Australia Zoo on these school holidays. Just by being here, you're helping us fund all of our conservation projects. I hope you have a really good time. Go on a treasure hunt, ride a pony, make sure to have fun, and remember, cross rule! Thanks, you guys!